Oh yeah! What's up guys? It's Apollo and today we've got an awesome battle. This of course is NTW3. We've got Napoleon himself leading the great Ray. Oh my god, look at this. Look at this, this is too much. This is too much! I can't- I'm so hyped for this. So this is a clan battle and I was a little- I was a little cautious. I didn't know if I wanted to call it clan battle because, you know, the guidelines or YouTube, they're probably gonna demon demonetize it. Uh, but, you know, even if I say clan or don't, they're probably gonna dis you know, demonetize it anyway. So what does it matter? You know, they, they might think it's the wrong kind of clan that I'm talking about. Anyways, um, so yeah, this one is a clan battle. Not only is it a clan battle, but it's got a fantastic finish to the battle. Also, it gets even better. This has a uh, historical vibe to it. So on this side, we got four French players and they're taking on a coalition force. So we have Austria, we have two British forces, and then we have uh, the Russians led by, uh, led by, let's see, yeah, Alexander himself. Look at that. Look at him. Glorious man. Good friends with Napoleon. It's too bad. Too bad what happened. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll kind of talk about the map here. Now remember, it's all about capturing these points. Uh, they do get a very close capture point. Both sides do, uh, which gives them four points. If you look at the layout here, I think the wild card settlement, the settlement that most factions are going to be fighting over is this one right here because it's dead center. Uh, these other houses are pretty close towards the uh, the two spawns. So I don't think there's going to be uh, too much battles going on here. And just based on the formation of the French here, hold on, you hear that? Hold on. Hold on. Where is that? Who's playing that beautiful music? I gotta find this. I'm not... Who's playing the music? I don't know. They're playing some French marching music. It's awesome. Uh, but yeah, based on the... I'm sorry. Based on the way they're deployed here, you can see there's just one player. It looks like maybe one and a half players going for this uh, little settlement. They might fight for this hill. And then I think most of the players are going towards this one. Because again, if you can take this one and you can hold on to it, there's a good chance you're going to win this battle. Uh, so we also have other historical figures. So we had Alexander, we had Napoleon, we have General Picton here, Sir Thomas Picton. And of course we have um, the, the master of all masters. We've got uh, Arthur Wellesley, uh, Duke of Wellington. So yeah, very cool stuff. Very awesome indeed. Uh, so let's go back over to the battlefield. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into army comps. You can tell that they are bringing a lot of line. If it's, Look at this. Look at this march right now. This is so cool. I don't know. It's just this mod is so good. It gets me cheesing every time. These battles are extremely long. They're an hour long. So let me, let me remind you guys to get some snacks and drinks. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the cinematic Napoleonic um, warfare style combat here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so, also, yeah, the battlefield looks great. It just looks like these planes here. I believe this is a Spanish battlefield. Uh, so, yeah, the cap is starting to push forward. We got some Lancers from the French. About three units of Lancers. Uh, we do have some Russian cav as well. So, lots of Russian cav uh, mixed in with some British cav as well. So, we got the six Dragoons, which is a good unit. We saw, we've seen this unit many times before crush armies by themselves and then we got the lifeguards the tins on the battlefield as well so a good cav force french are definitely outnumbered well it's actually quite even here for the french they've got hussars they've got lancers uh now they've got even more cav marching forward uh to kind of join the ranks and they're just kind of you know they're kind of flexing right now at this point the players are just showing off uh, their forces, they're making sure they have enough for a cav engagement. These Lancers though, they definitely need a good charge if they are going to engage them. Because Lancers, they don't do as well as, you know, in, in close prolonged combat. Uh, obviously, they have Lancers. Uh, so, yep, he's gonna fall back, it appears, or at least go up this hill. Maybe hide some of his, it, well, maybe he's just reforming a little bit there. If we head back over here, you can see the center forces are starting to appear. We have an artillery, a, a three-pounder, I think, is that, yeah, three-pounder horse horse artillery uh, so they're gonna set that up really quickly that's gonna help their line engagements we got more French cab just kind of hanging out in the center just really scouting out what the uh, the opponents are up to uh, we've got more cab from the Austrians I believe this is the general um, jo we got John von Liechtenstein uh, so cool <coughs> excuse me sorry about that 
and uh, more French Cav. Again, just checking out the center, making sure that they don't lose any advantages, you know, making sure they hold on to their current ground where they're located. Now, this artillery piece, I believe, is going to unlimber pretty soon. They haven't quite turned... Well, they're facing the wrong way. <laughs> I don't think... Have they unlimber? Uh, no, I don't think they've officially un... There they go. There they go. Now they're going to turn them around. Okay. Like, what are you doing? Treason! You're going to fire on your general? Oh, man. Okay, so the French still make, making their way using this road here. It's going to be interesting Interesting to see how um, the great Br or how the British go about a fighting this. Now, a good strategy here is to actually push really hard to take this building, which is... Wait, where is the capture build? Oh, it's right here. So you could try to trick the enemy in thinking, like, making him think you're going to fight tooth and nail for this building here, but rather send most of your forces over to this side and surprise this, this smaller French force compared to the French forces on this side. And oh my god, look at all these troops. I can't even imagine. Now, if we get through this battle without crashing, I'm going to I'm gonna be happy. So everybody take a moment and pray to whatever thing or lack of their thing you pray to. And let's hope that this does not crash because this is going to be the battle of the ages, really. Uh, but yeah, the French, I, I don't think we're going to see any cav engagement. That's actually quite surprising. Actually, hold that thought. I think I spoke too soon there. Oh, we almost got a cav engagement. The French got some gendarmes. It looks like, yeah, some dragoons. Uh, I, think, I think these are empress dragoons. Uh, then we've got more uh, grenadiers. So, oh, these guys are good. So, basically, grenadiers. Uh, this is basically on uh, uh, old guard on horseback is what I was trying to say. Um, but yeah, the British are going to form up quickly. They've got their... I believe they have their artillery as well. Did I see artillery? Maybe not. But the British have set up their lines. they got the 2nd Battalion here. Uh, the 54th Foot. So yeah, they're ready to go. Ready to protect themselves against any French Cav charges. More French Cav headed over this way towards this flank. They might be trying to uh, possibly maybe set up a huge cav charge because this is a decent number. I mean, this is more than a decent. This is a lot of cav over on this flank. So it should be interesting to see how that plays out. Now the Russian forces are starting to appear. And it looks like the Russians are going to go for this hill, which I think is pretty smart. They're going to try to take the high ground. And uh, we all learned from Star Wars, once you get the high ground, it's over. Uh, <laughs> not exactly. But the artillery getting dangerously close, almost killing uh, this, this line infantry force here. Almost looks like more of a, like a light force. Uh, but yeah, almost hitting these guys. Now, these guys cannot form square, I believe, by hovering over their, their names. Uh, so they've got to watch out for that. Now, they do have some supporting cav in case the Russians do decide to charge in. And, uh, oh, here we go. The Russians are advancing. We got some grenadiers here. We got uh, some line infantry. Oh, man. How do you not cheese when you see this? I cheese so hard. Look at the battlefield in the background. All the troops back there. You got the Russians moving up. Uh, the Russians, the Russians, the Russians. All right, let's go back over to this side. Uh, let's see what's going on. So France is still kind of flirting over here on this very left flank, looking for an opportunity to strike. And France is going in. He's got some Hussars moving. Oh, see, is he going to go for it? He is going for a cap charge. This is going to be our first engagement of the battle, going after some line infantry that cannot form square. The British are going to send in some 15th Hussars try to support that line infantry and now we've got even more french cav charging in that should break that cav unit the british are, are i'm sorry the french are going to be able to pull out of there and they just wrecked two british units and they are going to pull out without taking uh well basically taking very minor casualties and now the british are all forms of or all kinds of uh you know out of formation now the the french could push up take this advantage push up their line infantry and try to get them uh you know get firing at these guys before they can properly form up but that was a good move by the french very good move uh, let's head back over here though let's see how this is playing out it looks like it's not doing as hot well it's not going poorly for the french but they're basically saying hey take the hill i'm not gonna fight for it looks like you're gonna take it uh, which is not good i think this is a very strategic hill personally i don't know how this is gonna play out uh, this is the first time seeing the replay but I, I think the that they're, the Russians are going to be able to defend this hill, set up some artillery, and get a really good vantage point uh, to take out the French. Now, the French are moving up more line infantry, so I think they are going to fight for it. They're not going to completely give it up to the Russians, uh, but the Russians are in a pretty solid position as we speak, and they're already advancing towards the French. So I think this is going to be our first line engagement. Let's head back over here where we... I think we've got generals over here, too. 
Yeah, we've got some French generals. That is crazy. Very aggressive. I've seen a lot of players use their generals very aggressively here. And the British... Do we have another breaking unit? No, I think that's the same unit, I believe. But yeah, the British are on the run. Their artillery kind of out in the open here. And the, the French are slowly pushing forward using this road. So yeah, the British are... It's kind of the opposite here. we got the British retreating here. And then the French doing a little tactical retreat as well. Uh, but look at this. Look at this. They are forming up. He's quickly trying to get in position. Fighting for this hill. The French are not going give it, to give it up so easily. Got Cav also uh, hanging out. Now the Russians are the first to open fire. And the line battle is underway, guys. Uh, so the Russians are going to use their grenadiers. They've got their line infantry already popping shots now. The terrain here is pretty nice, but not nearly as good as up here, which we've got, uh, I think we got some light units. I believe these are light units mixed in with some grenadiers. Uh, the French are going to be the first to fire for this uh, specific location. But uh, because of this terrain, it's really going to help out these Russians. Sir, sir, our general is under attack. Oh, the general is getting hit here. Uh, you might want to fall back a little bit. Look at that, the battle going on, the general's point of view. So the general just moving slightly over, he just doesn't want to... He lost a bodyguard there, unfortunately. <laughs> Rest in peace. So a great line, great line battle is underway. And we actually have some safe sappers here that are maneuvering around this windmill. So I wonder if they're going to try to go for a, some sort of bayonet charge. I don't know, the smoke is kind of concealing, like hiding their uh, their movements here so they might just maneuver around and get a sneaky capture or not a ca a bayonet charge on these lights which stand no chance against those bayonets uh, over here the french have also set up some more lines so this is turning into a pretty long line battle and also the french artillery has set up they've got some uh, stakes here against any frontal cab charges very good move there so yeah he's got the artillery foot 12 pounder or 12 inch uh, but yeah he's going to be able to shell the russian position so while that's going on, let's see what else is happening. The, oh my goodness, uh, the Austrians are having to push over a lot of their forces over to this side, and they are about to attack the flank of the French. Now the French got to be careful here. They don't want to overextend and put themselves in a sticky situation, uh, but they are extending, and it looks like they're not turning back. Now the French, they've got enough forces to also counter the flank of the Austrians. This is actually a really good position for the French. So not a lot of fighting going on, but it's all been tactical. That's what I love about this game. The tactics, the positioning. That's what I love in a Total War game. Not micro positioning. Tactics. That's what we live for. Uh, but the French are taking some pretty heavy losses here. And the sappers... The sapers, sappers, whatever. Uh, they are... They're kind of stuck here. They're kind of stuck. It looks like he wanted to go for some kind of bayonet charge. We got even more French moving over this way. So I think he's, he is going to continue to flank around with this unit. But the Russians are not going to let him outflank him so easily. So we've got these grenadiers here uh, kind of supporting. Firing in between the two windmills. But they're still running. Look at that. Good, good angles here. Good fighting going on. Look at this battlefield. Look at that. Seeing the French ranks down. Just... Look, I mean, how legendary of a battle when you see this. Like, nothing compares to this mod. It's just so amazing. Uh, so back over here, the British look like they're finally going to stop here. Stop retreating. They're going to make their stand. And they are, um, well, they're going to feel the wrath of the French. Now, this is either going to be really good for the French or it might backfire because of this Austrian support. Now, like I said, the French have plenty of forces to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with both Austria and the British. But really, it's all up to the center French army to get there, to push forward. And honestly, I would try to break through this Austrian line and then cut through and surround the rest of Austrian's army. Uh, because it does seem like he's, he's going to be fighting on two fronts. I would try to take advantage of that. Because, you know, obviously fighting on two fronts, your micro is going to be uh, pretty intense. So we've got a lot of lights in here. We got the Chasseur, we got the Voltigers. Um, in fact, we have uh, some flankers who are pushing forward. Uh, they're going to try to get some pop shots here. This is actually pretty neat. They're going to try to stay out of range of the 54th foot. They are getting, ooh, a little too close there. Yeah, he got a little too dangerously close. I don't know if he's trying to put down stakes or... Nope, he's just fighting. He's just fighting. So I guess he's just keeping these guys contained as he continues. To, they're just kind of like screening for this line infantry that's continuing to push over here. I love that. Constantly stretching out his lines. 
and then we've got also um, some Voltigeurs kind of picking off some Austrian forces as they wait for the French to push forward. Now, most of the fighting here. Oh, look at this. We got some Cav engagements going on in the center of the line fight battle. I really need to pay attention over to this side of the fight more. Look at this fight right here. This is beautiful. Uh, so the Russians are going to be able to stop this French charge. The French are struggling to get any ground against the Russians here. Um, so it's going to be tough for them. Trying to uh, t trying to break through here now. Uh, <laughs> trying to break through here now. What am I trying to say here? Uh, but yeah, they've got the high ground, and it's true. The high ground, it's not going to automatically automatically make you win, but it is certainly going to help you. And we've got a general down. Ally general. Where? Oh, my God. Wow. Was that an artillery piece? Whatever it was, it was very, very unlucky. Extremely unlucky. Uh, losing his general, I assume either to uh, just a random shot or an artillery piece. That's very unfortunate. Now he's going to fall back his cav. With the loss of a general, that's going to be a hu huge morale breaker right there. Uh, so we got more chasseur afoot. Um, we have the fort. Look at these guys. Look at these uniforms. Look at these guys. Oh my god. The glory. All oh, the glory. So a nice line battle really opening up between the French and the British. Classic rivals here. Um, but, you know, I always used to say, like, when it was the British versus the French, it was the battle of superpowers, which is true, uh, you know, as, like, two countries as a whole. But compared to, like, land troops, the French had the British beat. But when it comes to Navy, uh, the, the, like, here's the thing. When it comes to Navy, the French stood zero chance against the British. Of course, we all know the British army stood a chance against the French, but they just weren't, they weren't as good as the French. Uh, but anyways, we got the 6th Dragoons going up, just pushing forward, already wrecking lives. Now remember guys, we've seen this unit destroy a lot of, uh, a lot of armies. So this is a problem. The fact that this unit is behind these French lines could be a big concern. Also, more French cab fleeing from the battle. Looks like they're just getting uh, defeated by this Russian cab, protecting their line infantry who I assume can't form square. Actually, I think he's protecting the artillery, which have a solid position. Very solid position. Look at that, just firing. Oh my God, look at the hole that he put in this line. Nasty. Now we got more cab charging in. Oh my God, what is happening? The cab is breaking. There goes the charge in the back lines of uh, the conscripts. Oh my God, a flying French. Uh, they do break the Dragoons, though. This is a good opportunity to, to kill these guys, which it looks like they are going to be able to do. That, so that was a bit of a suicide charge there with the six Dragoons. I don't think I would have used them as aggressively. Uh, but, hey, you know, you, you're doing something. Oh, maybe it was a distraction. It was a distraction. It even distracted me. The Russians going in with a bayonet charge. Also, Cav moving around the flank, cleaning up this French flank. This is not good for the French. This has been a struggle for the French team for pretty much the entire battle, just being out positioned from the very start of the fight. Now we've got Grenadiers moving in, going for the square formation. Look at this beautiful sight. Josh! Josh, break that square. Uh, the Russians moving in. The French are clustered up. Now the French are charging the front. The, Br the French are, the Russians are charging the front. The French are struggling here. And there is a mass chain route. And now the Russians are going in for a bayonet charge. And this is what they do best, guys. The French are good at bayonet charges as well. But probably in the game, not quite as well as the Russians. And that is going to cause a massive break on this French side. Huge, huge loss. Huge loss there. My God. What, what a just crazy change of events here. And the Russians will be victorious on taking this hill. And this high ground really gave them that advantage. Now back over here, the British are still fighting pretty well. Um, they're going to they're gonna really keep these French on their toes as they continue to fall back. The Austrians over here, um, still just not too much going on. There's a bit of a line battle going on in, this, in the city here. Uh, but yeah, we've got the battle kind of stretching out. Finally, these lines are, are meeting in battle. I mean, they've been fighting for a decent amount of time, but it seems like... These two forces are stop playing. They're, they're going to stop playing the cat and mouse game. They're going to stand their ground. They're going to fight here uh, in this glorious line battle. So if you are the French team, you've got to be pretty concerned 
about that right flank, that very right flank against the Russians. It seems like the French over on this side, they're not, obviously they're not being as aggressive. They're just hanging back, uh, just, you know, holding this tree line for as long as possible. Uh, if we head back here, let's see how this is playing out. Now, basically at this point, the French have to play the retreat here. They've got to fall back into a better position here. Try to make it so their flanks are not exposed. Uh, but we've got, let's see, how many units do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units falling back, which is good. The only problem here is this, this uh, line needs to fall back as well because they are about to be outflanked by the Russians. So yeah, great, great job by the British here. Just pinning down the French. Look at these uniforms too. Oh, the white helmets. That's so great. The white plumes as well. Very nice. Or feathers or whatever those are. Uh, but they're going to go ahead and push forward. They've got the French on the run on this flank. So, the, the you know, the British are going to join the Russians here as they continue to uh, put pressure on the French lines. And the French constantly fall back here. And really, just, they're just preventing from this flank to collapse completely. I mean, it's already partially col uh, collapsed. But they're going to try to basically stop the bleeding, hold back this huge force. Because the other French players, they've got to win it here. I mean, the fr like that was a stroke of genius by the British and Russians. It seems... Oh, wait, there we go. Here's the, here comes uh, the gendarmes charging into lifeguards. It's a, oh, my God. Look at this battlefield, guys. Look at this. So epic. So we, got, we do have a, a, yeah, a huge cap charge between the British, French, and Austrians also throwing in... Uh, throwing some punches over here uh, with uh, some of their Ulins, their Lancer cab. But I believe, oh, here comes another cab charge from the British. Look at this beautiful cab engagement. And I don't think they, they stand a chance against uh, the old guard on, you know, mounted old guard. Uh, but holy crap, look at that. Um, that, it looks like, yeah, the, it's just the French cab outclassed the Austrian uh, British alliance there and they should be able, I mean they're still not done yet they're still putting up a good fight the French are now kind of flanking around here a little bit I mean the, the French could easily break here too that's what happens with cab all the time uh, but this is really good this is really good so yeah that was uh, what I was saying before when the British and the Russian side that was a stroke of genius that strategy of using the six dragoons and I mentioned it while they were charging in I was like this seems suicidal why are they doing this oh it was a diversion, and the Russians just bayonet charge, flanked around with their cab, and crushed those uh, French lines. Uh, but also, the British seem to be losing over near this building as well. It's still pretty even. Uh, the French are also losing a lot of numbers as well. So, love the helmet there. Beautiful. Uh, or not the helmet, the hat, excuse me. Uh, but yeah, it lo looks like a French... Oh yeah, look at this! Okay, so this battle is becoming very interesting. So the French over on this side are having a lot of success. They won the cab engagement, um, but it's not completely over. And now the British are on the run on this side, and it's kind of the opposite fatigue, over on this sir, side where the, the French the are, are kind of just falling back over here. Now, we've got artillery shelling the French lines. You can cause it's, oh, it's disrupting their formation. And the French aren't having any of that. They're going to fall back. Actually, I think they're making room for another line unit. And uh, it's still fairly even. I mean, even after that pretty huge... Um, that huge like flank by the Russians it's still very even with the French and the Russian numbers but again the Russians have the advantage and um, we've got invisible cannons they're just too far for the French to see I guess uh, so yeah he's got some cannon support just kind of shelling way across the battlefield um, so yeah here comes the Russians the British are also making a bold move here oh my god look at this we've got cab charging in some Lancers they're going after a square formation. Things are getting really messy over here. In fact, I'm not even sure what's going on. Got a bayonet charged by some conscripts. Oh. Oh, he stabs them. The British look like they are on the run here. The French are making a bold bayonet charge. Here they go. Charge! Break the square! If they can break the square, they could send in more cav. They're also setting up more build or more troops here to fire at the at the British. Let's see. The town hall. Let's see them open fire. Come on, quickly! Get ready, get ready! Hold, stand your ground, stand your ground! <laughs> Come on, seriously, fire! What the hell? There they go, there they go. So they're gonna help their bayonet charge. It's still it's still pretty even. 
I think the French were just trying to put a gap in the lines. Austrians are now coming over. Okay, this is crazy, guys. Austrians are now funneling all their troops down this way to support because I feel like this is the coalition's best uh, opportunity. This is where they're really winning the battle right now. And uh, Austria is going to go ahead and dedicate a ton of forces to just go in for the kill. I like this maneuver a lot by Austria. Great teamwork here. Again, this is a clan battle. And the person who sent this in said he's been playing for five years. And that's how old the mod is. This dude has been playing since the creation of the mod. So you know he's going to be good. You know he's going to be great. So we got some Grenadiers holding. Uh, but they are breaking this. Oh my god. This Russian bayonet charge over on this flank looks horrendous. And the French are constantly on the retreat so the french are really suffering here but let's see how it's playing out over here uh well it looks like the french are winning just based on the fact that the british are falling back uh they are losing control of this area the austrians are also kind of moving back as well so it's so even guys it's hard to tell right now i would say just based on the balance of power the french are taking oh another general has been slain wow Man, so these professional, uh, not professional, but these skilled players, experienced players, are very aggressive with their generals. And they're not the only ones who do that. I've seen a lot of people just kind of throw in their general and see what they can do. Uh, but there goes another general. In, when it, in uh, general deaths, it's pretty even. The French have lost one, and I believe the Austrians have lost theirs. And now the French are on the retreat once again, falling back probably to this, uh, this tree line over here. Uh, but the Russians, British, still closing in. Look at these French. They're, they are surrounded, and they're just trying to spare as many lives. I, I think he is going to sacrifice some units here, holding at the great tree, uh, at great tree. We will remember their stand as they hold off against the British uh, to uh, really defend the retreat of these forces. Now Russia's moving in around the flank. Russia's still just pushing hard right now. Look at them. They are not not stopping they do not want to let the french be able to regroup and now the french really honestly guys this entire french flank it's pretty much broken i mean we still have these guys but they're in such a bad position i mean look at this there's nothing in the center the french are now moving forward i think he's trying to get the austrians caught out of position but the austrians do stop they're looking the wrong way not sure what's going on there uh but the brit the french are now moving towards the austrians as well so I don't know, guys. I'm a little concerned. I'm a little concerned for the French. You know, I am a French weeaboo. Well, let's just... Let's not forget. For Napoleon. For Napoleon. Uh-oh. So what's going on here? More French are on the run. Con oh, my God. The massive bayonet charge, man. These Russians. They're d oh, look at all this breakage here. Look at all the breakage. I don't know. How do the French turn this one around? I think the French are just forming like a defensive, like, hopeless last stand around this building and around these trees. He's got conscripts over here. They stand no chance against these, uh, these grenadiers. The Russian grenadiers. Unless this, is, unless this is all part of their strategy. Also, a lot of Austrians are breaking as well. So I don't know what happened there. Maybe a little bit of a bayonet charge. I mean, there's, these battles are so massive in scale. There's just so much going on. Our men are running yeah, but yeah, I mean, the, the French are still trying to hang on to anything here. Uh, but now look at this. The French are moving up. Look how close they're getting. Also, I think we've got some Iberian troops here as well. Are these Iberian? They look Iberian. I don't know. Don't, don't quote me on it. So, yeah, the French definitely had a lot of uh, foreign troops fighting their ranks. Though it wasn't like half or anything. I think it was like one-sixth of the army was foreign legion, uh, foreign troops and stuff. Uh, but it, don't quote me on that. I guess it depends really on the campaign and, and when. Uh, but, more, yeah, more um, French moving this way. The British have completely fallen back, and now they're trying to head over to their allies quickly. Uh, but, yeah, it seems like the British over here are pretty much defeated. Um, but, you know, I, I shouldn't say pretty much. They still have a couple units here, which that's all you need in this battle. If you still have life, you can still do a lot of damage. But I was, I'm was i not sure what the French are trying to achieve here by pushing up three units alone like this. Oh, but a cab charge. Maybe that's what they're going for. So we got uh, some Lancers. Yeah, we got some Lancers, and they're breaking the Austrians. And now the French are moving in for the kill. The rest of the line infantry... 
Yeah, it's it's looking bad, guys. The French are now falling back over to their final stand. I don't know. How do you pull this off? Kind of reminds me of the uh, <laughs> the Waterloo movie from the you know 1970 when uh, Napoleon's like, I lost the battle at five, but I won it at seven. <laughs> That's just kind of what I envision Napoleon doing right now. Like, you know, we're losing it now, but we're gonna win it later. Uh, we'll see though. It's all up to this fight right here against these Austrians. There they go. Look at them pushing forward. These are some good, solid troops. Austria is still hanging on, trying to wait for some allies. And I think the French, this is where they make their stand against the British. The British are pushing forward. 44th foot. What are these guys called? The Little Fighting Fours? That's cool. East Essex. Very awesome. I love that. See, that's stuff you won't see in Napoleon, like vanilla. Like little uh, hidden historical uh, treasures there. 28th foot fighting there. So, yeah, the French look like they are going to make their stand. The biggest problem, though, is this Russian force going to be able to flank around and get behind uh, the French kind of last stand here. Uh, now, it's all up to this flank with the French. And actually, they've got a lot of reserves back here, which I assume he's going to be using on the British. The British are holding. They're like, hold on. There's a lot of Frenchies waiting for us. Nope, nope. They're going to keep going. They're going to keep going. And now the French have uh, their general nearby. Uh, they've got, uh, they're winning this melee charge. And yeah, sure enough, they've got the Austrians on the run. Uh, so And the British. And here comes another cab charge. Some hussars. So yeah, they're going to slowly pick apart uh, the British forces. And sure enough, they're going to fall back. And now we also have a bayonet charge from some Marines. we got some Marines going in. Well played. He got his cab out of there right in time to avoid that square. Very well played by the French player. And now he's pushing up more troops. And uh, I think the French are still kind of doing some tactical retreating. And oh, well, look at this. We got some French lines just kind of keeping some of the uh, Russian lines distracted, uh, which is very interesting indeed. Alexander's probably feeling pretty good about his, uh, this battle so far. He's like, I might actually beat Napoleon. Wow. <laughs> and it's not even winter. All right, so now we got some more. I think we got some Polish Legion pushing forward. Huge bayonet charge. This might be it, guys. This might be, yes, more charging in from the French. This might be a huge turn in the battle is what I was trying to say. Let's see, is he going to charge in more? I think that's it. Uh, the rest are going to sit back and I assume, nope, he's going to charge in. More French uh, line infantry. Look at that. Huge. Look at this bayonet fight. This epic struggle right now between these two great forces and the Austrians are getting destroyed the Austrians are getting destroyed the French are making a bold push here and like I said guys this battle is far from over uh, the forces have really suffered a lot of casualties we're more than halfway done we've got 26 minutes left 26 minutes left um, this is huge the Austrians need to figure their they, they need to figure this out they need to stop the bleeding they need to fall back reform their lines maybe get some pop shots here now some of the units will return to the battle uh, but I'm sure the French are gonna try to prevent that the French are now breaking their formation a bit here look at this they're gonna fall back a tad bit uh, because I think I believe the Russians are the ones causing a lot of issues for these uh, French now this is this is very promising for the French army the French uh, the French team also we got a little something going on oh this this line battle still going on now let's not forget that it's all about capturing these buildings here okay so um, it's not necessarily about the last army standing so that's one thing you you can't forget <laughs> so look at this look at how this is forming out so the French are still pushing on to this left side uh, the British are now moving over and the French are also moving over as well uh, so just the armies are kind of shifting together towards this building, it looks like. Or no, they could be trying to get towards this building. We do have some artillery just sitting here. The French should definitely go for that artillery. Wow, wait, why is there British artillery here? Okay, bizarre, bizarre. Hold on. Yeah, hold, look at, that's why there's artillery there. Look at how the, wait, am I losing my mind right now? The armies, okay, this is bizarre. Let me slow motion this real quick. The ar I can do normal speed. These are long battles. The armies have completely shifted sides. They have completely shifted sides. That is hilarious. 
So yeah, the French are holding on to this town hall that gives them a point. Uh, so the French have one point at this at this point. Uh, the Russians are still charging in with bayonets. These grenadiers are getting tired though. I mean, they've been charging for a long time. The British are now behind. Look at this. The British appear from the woodwork, appear from the trees, from the tree line. And now they've got some reinforcements, but I think the French are well prepared for this. They've got some reinforcements, uh, some re reserves um, as well. So this battle right here is going to decide this fight. Uh, this is going to be crazy fun. I am excited to see how this ends. Uh, you know, the French have really been struggling, but they have, they're coming back. They're coming back and doing a lot of damage. So let's get some, uh, some close-ups here. Let's get rid of the mini-map. I just enjoy... The line battles here. The French uniforms uh, do not compare. Or, the, yeah, nothing compares to the French uniforms is what I was trying to say. Uh, the Russian uniforms are cool, too. I'm just not a huge fan of the green. You know? uh, but, oh, man, seeing French drop there. Look at that. Hold your ground, man. Hold your ground. We may be outnumbered, but we're not outskilled. Uh, I'm surprised they're not going for this artillery. I don't know what it's doing. Might be glitched out. Not really sure. It doesn't really matter because they're not really moving it or firing it anyways. Uh, so, yeah, it might have just been glitched out, I assume. Uh, but, yeah, these forces still holding. The, the French are kind of turning now to face uh, the British. And you can see, if we turn on the minimap here, you can see that players are now starting to take buildings. Uh, we've got a one-pointer over here, which is controlled by the Russians now. Uh, so, it's a one versus one in terms of points. And the French and the British are just duking it out right now. Let's get a let's get the uh, the uh, British point of view here as they fight these French lines. I mean, it seems like the French are outnumbered here quite a bit. Oh, look at that flash of fire! So awesome. Yeah, it seems like they're heavily outnumbered. Um, well, they've got a lot of reinforcements here, but if I was the British, I'd just fall back. And sure enough, he is. That's going to make the French constantly have to worry about their rear. Constantly worry about, you know, sending over reserves, which they could be using against these Austrians. Uh, but having to deal with the British and just... The, the, really, the British are just keeping the French aggravated. Keeping them distracted and uh, away from this front line. Uh, but we do have a retreat from the French. Once again, tactical retreat here. The Russians are now moving towards... I'm not sure what they're moving towards. Maybe they're moving towards this building. They're gonna, they're gonna capture this building again. Remember, it's about points. But the French, you know, they may be retreating over on this side, but they're still pushing hard on this side. So very interesting tactics here. I think they're gonna make way, make a, yeah, they're definitely gonna add some Austrian lines to the mix. So Austria pretty banged up at this current point of the battle, but he still has uh, very important units that are flanking around, causing some issues. And yeah, there's gotta be some kind of glitch going, like a graphic glitch going on with this six pounder horse. It's as if it's just not here. But the Grenadiers, I mean, what are they doing? They're getting really close here. Uh, they're gonna stand their ground. They're gonna fire, I assume. Form up, men! There you go. I don't know if, they're not gonna win that. They're surrounded on two fronts. Yeah, the French are full on retreating here. This is a big problem. Austria flanking around. This is a huge problem. Beautiful line battle still raging on over here. I love it guys. I love it so much. Uh, France, uh, or I'm sorry, the Russians have finally stopped marching. They're going to go ahead and fall back a little bit. Uh, I don't know if they're trying to set up a trap here or it's the fact that they're losing. It could be the fact, I mean, these tire, these units have seen a lot. They've taken out an entire French army, it seems like. Uh, but they still have a lot more to go. And yeah, I mean, this battle is quickly turning. I mean, it's turning. It looks like it's turning in favor of the French. The French are moving in some cab. Look at this. He's got some Lancers. Not sure where they're going to go, though. I mean, I don't know. Can these... No, these units cannot form any squares. Their 35th foot can form a square. You can see the little box right there indicating it can. Uh, but now they're going to charge in for these Austrian lines, which I don't think any of them can form square. Sure enough, they cannot. And there goes the Lancers. They're going to charge right in their face. There they go. Oh, they... Actually, that was pretty good from Austria. That was huge. That last second, they were able to get a volley there, and that broke the cab. They could have easily have lost this unit. But the French are going to go in for a bay uh, bayonet charge over here. These Marines, I imagine, are very good in melee. And now they're going to move on to the next unit, but the Austrians are going to try to quickly avoid that melee and set up their lines and just fire at the Marines as they continue to advance. So good tactics here by both players. And sure enough, the British are still fighting over here. 
The British d decided not to fall back. I think it's because he just, he has to fight. He's got to put pressure on the French before they can send over reinforcements. And now we got another cap charge from the Hussars. And that should break these Austrians. That's what sucks about this. Not every unit can form a square. And sure enough, look at that. The Austrian flank has been defeated. This is an island of British, you know, they come from an island. But also they're surrounded by an ocean of blue of French troops. That was a great move. They kind of divided the British and the Austrians. And he was the French were able to pick off uh, the uh, the Austrian forces. Very good move. Now the French are going to go ahead and form up. Ooh, it's a little poor my, poor forming up there. But he's going to uh, meet 35th foot. The Orange Lilies. And this line battle still seems to be a pretty intense stalemate. Uh, now we do have some Cav over here, which could be huge. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like the rush. Well, some of the Russian lines can form square. And also Alexander, he's getting a little concerned here. He's like, oh my god, Napoleon's going to do it again. He's going to defeat me. Uh, but here comes a charge. And sure enough, yes, he is going to go. But the Grenadiers are going to stay close and form square. Oh, another general has fallen. Who is it? Oh, was that Picton? Wait, who was it? No, that wasn't Picton. Who died? Was that, was that the Duke of Wellington? I don't know. I'm not sure, but yes, he was defeated. This line is breaking. The British are breaking over here. The French are causing issues. Let's go back over here, though, because this is huge. Yeah, the, look at the, these tactics are so awesome. So the Cav is causing the Russians to kind of freak out here. The French are constantly pushing forward. The Austrians are moving forward as well. The French need to quickly maneuver their troops. This line battle still dead even, but this is going to be interesting to see who can turn this one around. All right, so Grenadier, Cheval. Uh, the old guard pretty much on horseback. They're kind of hanging out, waiting. I, I, really, what the French need to do, take, get this Grenadier unit off the battlefield, and they can charge down all these guys. Well, actually, these guys can form square. Uh, but still, you take these Grenadiers off the battlefield, there's going to be plenty of opportunity. Now, the French are maneuvering their lines. They're going to try to hold back the Austrian flank. Austrians are falling back a little bit. Uh, the Br the I'm sorry, the French are starting to waver here a little bit. So it's not looking good on that side for the French. But the French, of course, are victorious over here. And they're going to push forward and put some pressure on the Austrian flank and the, and the British flank. A bit of a mess over here, but it looks like the British uh, back uh, reinforcement, rear force, I guess you could say, uh, have been defeated. And now all these French forces, well, actually, they're still fighting over here. But, yeah, there they go. Now they're defeated. And now the French forces um, can uh, go ahead and focus all of their attention. I hear some screaming, though. I hear some charging. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, this is so close of a battle, guys. The balance of power shifting more in favor of the French, but it's still in favor of the coalition force. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Let's see. Has there been any new buildings being captured? Well, we have um, the Lions. These guys are headed over to this building. So they're going to go ahead and capture this four-pointer. Now, it's still one-to-one -one in terms of points, I believe, if I am not mistaken. So as this line battle continues, we're going to go ahead and look at some points here. Yeah, so we got one point for the French. And one point... Right? No. Yeah, there's only one point for the French. The this other building buildings have not been... The there we go. Now it's four against one in terms of points. Coalition four. Uh, French one. But they've got... They've got these guys surrounded. Look at this. The French flanking around... Oh, yeah. They've got these guys completely surrounded. Holy crap. The French are going in for the kill. The British are falling back. The Russians are falling back. They realize they've got the heck. They've got to get the heck out of here. Because look at this minimap. You can see it so easily. Look at the red is the French. The blue are the coalition forces. The French are going in for the kill, folks. They're going in for the kill. This is awesome. Now the French charging. They've got their cab charging in as well. Here comes a bayonet charge. Oh, and Napoleon! He's like, let me die with my men! Napoleon is going in as well. Wow. That is a ballsy move right there. Using Napoleon uh, to take out these forces. That is genius. Well, not using Napoleon, but this, this tactic right here. This is... They gobbled up the coalition forces. And now the French are going in with suicidal bayonet charges look at this glorious bayonet charge he's got his marines who have been very very effective 
on today's battlefield. The Russians are coming over as well. Uh, I think they're just trying to stop this. Oh, are they just moving in? I think they're just moving in for a glorious bayonet charge. I think they realize they've got the advantage here. They're also moving around some French troops over this way. The Austrians trying to protect the rear of the uh, the British, but they are outnumbered. Let's see if they can hold on here. The French stretching out their lines pretty long. And I think it's because he's stretching them out long so he can maneuver around uh, some chasseur, uh, chasse sorry, chasseur afoot. Uh, and now we got some cab moving in. Is he going to go for the British? Let's see. These guys are very tired, though. What are they doing? What are they doing? I guess he's just trying to get them to form square. Maybe. That might be a strategy. And the Russians are trying to secure this flank. They are doing a pretty good job of keeping back the French. The Marines need to turn around or get out of there. The French are falling back over here, but they are pushing their advance on this flank. There goes more bayonet charges charging in, going after this uh, British two British lines. The Austrians are now starting to break. The flank is lost, and now the French can go in for the kill. But here's the thing. Um, do the British still control this? I assume so. I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. Um, it's hard to tell indeed. Uh, but the French are going in for the kill, and now it's all down to the Russians. Man, this is... This played out, this was such an interesting battle, and it's still not over yet. It's still so close. Artillery is being fired. I believe this is Russian artillery over on this side, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, just kind of firing down at the French. The French are on full speed, like full charge, going to try to take out uh, these Russian lines and get revenge for losing one of their French corps, I guess. French, uh, or French corps over on this side. Uh, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Army? Uh, they lost that. Uh, during this battle so yeah getting some revenge here as the russians fall back and the french push forward so this was really fun really fun battle and there's still 13 minutes 13 minutes left um but i feel like oh hold on hold on we got austrians going for this building over here how strong is this unit in here there's only got 61 men and he's going to be taking on 92 and a 57 from the United Kingdom. So it looks like Austria and the British are going to try to snatch up some buildings and make it difficult for the French. Now, I guess Russia is just trying to um, delay the French. So let's go ahead and fast forward, guys, because I feel like uh, most of the tactical fighting is pretty much over. It's now just a full-on chase for this battlefield. And just look. Like, this is why I, lo I love NTW3. Look at all the places that were fought here today and it's all because of the strategic building that's why i love the capturing building game mode because it makes players aggressive and defensive uh they are getting sideswiped here by that artillery they might want to take that out uh but the russians are if they have just one cav unit all oh, the russians are getting caught up over here uh and I, are they going to turn around no they're just going to keep running yep there goes <laughs> there goes the french firing firing as they retreat there goes the Russian artillery. They finally revealed themselves on the battlefield once again. And um, let's see. Okay, now remember, this is a battle of points. And I think so far, I think the Russians control this one. Maybe not. No, but the French are going to take it. The French. Oh, no. Another general has fallen. Yeah, they're still just pursuing. He used his cav unit to try to chase down the, uh, the Russians here. Oh, my God. So I think the, the French have just kind of given up on chasing down the Russians. And it's so clear that the Russians are going to make their stand at this house. Now that's, let me do normal speed here. This is huge. Actually, I don't need to do that because nobody's fighting just yet. This is huge because this is worth four points. And they already controlled this, this house with the four points. So it's like tactically, um, the French have won the battle, but they haven't won it overall in, in terms of points because... They've got to deal with this Russian army. Uh, now, the French are controlling this building, and they are controlling this bu uh, building, but they're only worth one point each, so they've got a total of two points. Uh, they might as well go ahead and take this building over here, which I believe they are. We've got some French units uh, going this side as well. Uh, so they're going to have three points there, uh, but still, the Russians have that four-pointer. Um, and I think the French are sending over some troops. Oh, but there's some British that are going to slow them down here. There they go. They're going to chase them down. And I think the French are just going to keep going. The French, uh, I guess they're going to try to hope that there's a weak unit in here. I think we can't see the unit because they're so far away. 
and then back over here we've got alexander's and his forces still just falling back and we've got this little road defense as they try to hang on to this building yeah they're, they're desperately trying to hang on the french are now advancing forward uh getting their troops in position and i think soon we're going to be able to uh press play once again uh and, and do normal speed uh there's four minutes there's less a little less than five minutes left in the replay and yep okay let me do normal speed here sure enough guys the Russians do still, con or the British still, co uh, still control this four-point base. Uh, now, here's the thing: if the French, they are racing against the clock. They cannot let the. Basically, the Russians are preventing these guys from taking this building. And if they can prevent them from taking the building, the coalition force will win, because they will have more forces. The French will be defeated just based on points not more forces on um, more points is what I meant to say uh, so right now it's eight against three points the coalition has eight points this is not gonna be easy guys here we go they're gonna charge in Ooh. so I believe the chasseur afoot these guys are like the old guard but they weren't tall enough to be a part of the old guard so the shorter guys would go towards uh, a, another elite unit, but not quite the old guard, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so Alexander falling back here. Um, well, we actually have Napoleon. He's just like, lay down your arms and I will show you mercy. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> love it. So by the way, this hat right here, in case you're wondering, I, I just purchased an authentic uh, hat that's going to be made. Uh, it's handmade. It's gonna. It's taken two months to make. Very excited about it. I'm such a nerd. Uh, but I'm going to be wearing that during my streams and stuff. Uh, but yeah, the French slowly trying to break down the Russians. The Russians are just trying to delay as long as possible. They've got three minutes, a little, a little less than three minutes. Um, I think the French forces that are coming over this way are actually getting picked apart over here. Uh, so I don't think... Yeah, well, they might be able to take this building. They might be able to take it with these Marines. The Marines are pretty good. They're tired, though. He might want to rest them up. But they've got, they've got two minutes and 39 seconds. The other French troops over here are, I guess, holding back the Austrians. Oh, my God. What a photo finish this is going to be. Artillery now firing at random French troops. All right. We'll let that slide, I guess. Not a big deal. It's not important to the battle. Uh, French are pushing forward. Let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit. The French are now pushing forward. They're going to try to flank around. Uh, let's see if they can take this building... This is going to be it, guys. If they take this building, the French win. Our if they... Fallen, was that Napoleon? Oh, my God. Napoleon's dead. <laughs> Napoleon's dead because he was standing near the building. Why would he do that? Why would he do that during a critical bayonet charge? And now they got to try to take out uh, Alexander here, who's putting up a glorious last stand. But I don't expect him to last long. So this is a race. This is a photo finish, guys. Two Russian units are going to try to hold up in here. Like I said, if the Russians can hold, the coalition force wins. The coalition army. If the French take, the, take, take this, they're going to win um, pretty effectively as well. Actually, the French only have two points here. But it doesn't matter. They're still going to win if they take this building. Uh, there is tw 42 seconds left. This is a photo finish, guys. Are they going to be able to take it? The Russians are breaking. The Russians are breaking. There is 32 seconds left. No, the Russians are gaining morale once again. They cannot kill Alexander, who is giving them hope, who is taking on these French single-handedly. Oh, there he goes. The general is down. Alexander is down. And now the Russians surely must break. There's no way. But the Russians still stand true, fighting for victory here on this battlefield. The French, why aren't they sending in more troops? They need to send in more troops. This is going to decide the battle. There's six, five, four, three... Two, one. Wait, who? Wait, it's still going. It's still going. The French are fighting over here too. And the French, they take the building. The French take the building. There is, oh my God. There was, okay, there was legit no time on the clock, but sometimes Napoleon continues to play on um, even though there's no time. And the French are able to take this building literally at the last second we got the notification right at the last second and this is going to be a french victory not only by tactics and really just controlling the battlefield but also taking the points well done well done indeed uh so i believe this was sent in by um 
crap, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it was, oh, uh, you know, I, dang it. I think it was Jaeger who sent it in because he got 2,727 kills. This dude was like, get in my backpack. I will carry us to victory. This guy also did pretty well as well. But good game to all the players on the battlefield here today. We saw, we saw some ex excellent plays from both teams. Uh, by the way, the, the clans here, we got RG versus LG. Hats off to all you guys. You fought well, and it was uh, very entertaining to watch. Uh, so getting the most kills for the, the person who sent it in. 72E, we got some line here. So very cool. Very cool, guys. So that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, that was crazy intense, and I hope to get more clan battles in the future because this was so entertaining. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, don't forget to leave a like, a comment, share, and of course subscribe for more epic battles. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time on the battlefield. <laughs>